to Bible study online, interactive Bible study. We bless the holy name of God. The God we are serving is a mighty God. And this God is going to work his wonders and miracles, even in your lives and destinies. In the name of you are all welcome. You know, my name is Chris, Pastor Chris of Borough Center, and I'll help my wife, Pastor Funke. Bless you, good evening. Thank you for joining us this hour. We pray the Lord will bless everyone in the name of the Lord. God bless you. Good evening. Good evening, everybody. God bless you. You are all welcome. This is Interactive Bible Study, where we study to show ourselves approved of God. And I know that the Lord is going to work His wonders and miracles, even in our lives and destinies, in the name of Jesus. Amen. You are not watching by accident, but by divine appointment. We are so happy you are able to join with us. And we know that this God is going to work His wonders and miracles, even in your lives and destinies, in the name of Amen. Jesus. So you are all welcome to another edition of Interactive Bible Study. You know what? Where we study and dig deep to know more of God. And God will give you and I and everyone of us the grace in the name of Jesus. Amen. God bless you. You are welcome in the name of the Lord. Please as we are joining, get your Bibles ready and get your writing back. This is Bible study. We pray the Lord will teach us. Yes. The Holy Ghost will touch every life. We we'll expand the word of the living God yes. even in our hearts in the name of Jesus. God bless you. Thank you for joining us. You are blessed in Jesus' name. Thanks for those who waited as we are playing the intro. God will bless you. And don't forget that we are on two platforms, as you can see right away. We are on Facebook. That is our Facebook details, as you can see on the screen. Please share on your Facebook page. Share on your timeline. Share with the groups you belong to. And God will bless you. And also, you can share on WhatsApp and Instagram and Messenger. Shall I WhatsApp and Instagram Messenger? Why? Because you can share with the groups you belong to. God will bless you. And also, we are on YouTube. That is our YouTube channel, as you can see on the screen. You know what? Inform your subscribers and those who are subscribed to us all work together. I you know everyone can share on many, many, many social media apps or um, uh, um, links that you are on. Let's share, let's spread, and God will bless, increase, and prosper you in Jesus' name. Amen. And please, as you are joining the Bible study, bring in your families. Especially your children, this is holiday time. Yes. Um, cast it on the screen so that everyone can actually see. So please let your children be a part of Bible study. Because assuming we are coming into the church, I mean the physical church, of course you come with your children. Yes. So also if you are doing all if you are doing online Bible study, it's for the all is is for every member of the family. Tell them that they call the children. Daddy call your wife, mommy call your husband, call your children, so everybody will sit down and settle with the word of the living God, and God will bless us in Jesus' name, because faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. The word of God is very important in every life, and God will help us this evening in Jesus' name. Amen. So you are all welcome in Jesus' name. Please, let's share, share, share. Let's get together with families and work together. You know what? But so even casting to your TV or watching together, make sure you still have your TV device <coughs> so that you can make comments or ask questions or contribute to what we are do saying or doing. You know, on this um, program, it's interactive, iron, sharpened iron. So we combine all the knowledge we have together and I believe that God will bless us. So invite your friends from far and near. I believe that today's going to be very exciting. I believe we have great questions to ask and God will bless us and work his wonders and miracles even in our lives and destiny. So keep on sharing, keep on inviting those whom you have not seen. You know what? Begin to work it. You begin to invite them and God will bless everyone in the name of Jesus. You are welcome in the name of the Lord. God bless you. Thank you so much for joining us. Let us, let us all get ready for the word of the living God and the Lord will teach us. We shall be taught of the Lord in Jesus' name. Amen. Shall we pray? Father, we thank you. Bless Amen. you. We give all the praise, glory, honor, marvelous King, accept our thanks in the name of Jesus. Amen. You are the Alpha and the Omega, the first, the last, again, the end. Thank you for giving us the grace to be here again in your presence with the fullness of joy. Hallelujah. We thank you. We bless you. Worship, praise, and adore you. Today is the last Wednesday. Thank you, Jesus. Seventh month, thank you, Lord, Hallelujah. of this year. We bless and worship and pray and adore you. You've kept us thus so far. Mm -hmm. And we thank you for your goodness and mercy. Mercy, I know you're going to keep us even further and set our thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. Mighty Father, we call upon you. Gather with us tonight. Have your way. Amen. Do a new work. Come down with your fire upon your grace. Mm -hmm. Come down with words of wisdom, even from your Amen. Jesus' name. Every sin, Lord, forgive in Jesus' Amen. name. Amen. with your blood in Jesus' name. Amen. Holy Ghost, have your way. Amen. This is your service. This are your people. Mighty Father, we have all come to land at your feet. Amen. Teach us in Jesus' name. Give us the insight, the in 
index in your word, mm-hmm. let it be ours in Jesus' name. Mm-hmm. We come against every evil power of the enemy because we are not ignorant of the devices. We come against the plans of the enemy. We bind, we cast it to the name of Jesus. Mm-hmm. Every destructive spirit, every power that is of um, the word of God, every power that, 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 that divides the mind, every power that wanders away, we come against such powers. We bind Amen. them, we cast them to hell in the name of Jesus. Amen. We pray, my dear Father, for the power and grace of concentration in Jesus' name. Amen. We cover ourselves with the blood of Jesus. Amen. We cover our minds, our hearts, our our thinking process, our brains, my dear Father, our conscious and subconscious, we cover with the blood of Jesus. Lord of Jesus. Have your way, O Lord, Amen. and let your name be glorified. We just today at the very front of our need, Amen. my dear Father, do a new work. Amen. Touch everyone through your words tonight. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank we you give all the praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's go before God and begin to thank Him tonight. Let's exalt Him. Let's, yes. let's give Him glory. Let's give Him honor. Let's begin to thank Him in Jesus' name. Father, we thank Him for His power. We thank Him for His power. For the last will be in the end. I shall I thank Him for His grace and mercy. We love and worship for those that are doing it. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Master. Thank you, Savior. Thank you, Lord. 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 Thank you, Master. Lord, Savior. I shall I thank you. Thank you. Bless you. Amen. Let's go before God and thank God for the living word of God because the word of God will touch us, the word of God will renew us, the word of God will change our lives. Let's begin to thank Thank you for your word because the word will renew us, touch us, transform our lives. Your word will be working wonders and miracles in life, Mighty Father. Your word is great and mighty. Your word, Mighty Father. Thank you for your word, for your grace, for your mercy. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Master. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Let's ask for the forgiveness of sins. The Bible says if we regard in our, if we regard in equity in us, the Lord will not hear us and begin to pray in Jesus' name. Let's not talk for them. Forgive, 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 Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Yes, dear God. Holy Spirit of the living God, I need your power, I need your fire, I need your touch. Holy Ghost, touch me tonight. Let's so begin to pray. Father, we pray tonight. Touch, touch, fire, power, grace, touch, 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 touch. Amen. Let us tell God, Lord, breathe upon me tonight, oh God. Let Lord, let me have an encounter even through your word tonight. Let me be the one to Father, you are the breath upon us. Send your breath upon us. Amen. Amen. If you are just joining us, welcome to Interactive Bible Study. You know, this Bible study is well packed. We have um, Bible study, we have prayers, we have question time. If you have been reading your Bibles, I believe so you should be, and you came out, read a chapter of a verse you don't understand, when the time comes, we we'll let you know you can post in your questions. Or maybe we're discussing some friends, and you know sometimes we get into heated discussions and you want some questions, you can post that in when the time comes, we we'll let you know. Or maybe you are um, 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 you listen to, you tuned into TV or radio, or you saw something on social media, you want some um, explanation, you can do that when the time comes. That's question time, and God will bless you. We have prayer time too, we have praise time too. I tell you, it's well packed. So invite your friends from far and near, and God will bless you. You are not watching by asking mm-hmm. about divine appointment. As you know, we have both on Facebook and YouTube. So begin to share, 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 and God will bless you as we begin to share because the kingdom, the gospel of the kingdom must be spread to the very ends of the earth. And that is one of the ways by which you can spread to the very ends of the earth. So you know what? The more you are sharing, the more you are spreading the gospel. So be a part of it, and God will bless you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Right now we're going to go into praise and worship, and Rafa Aska will be leading us to praise and worship the Lord. Let's all join, and God will bless us even in the name of the Lord.
Jesus mighty name we pray. Amen. Let's tell God as we are here this day. Let us learn from you. Mm. Teach us your word. Us. Holy Spirit, we present ourselves. Be in charge, O oh God. Let's begin to pray. Mighty God, eternal God, we bring ourselves before you. Holy Spirit of a living God, we don't know anything, but you will be taught of us, O God. You will teach us, O God. Because we will be taught of you, O Lord. Thank you, Lord, because you will teach us tonight, Lord, like never before. Teach us, O God. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. Jesus. I am here, Jesus, I am here, Jesus, I am here, I am here for you, Holy Ghost, I am here, Holy Ghost, I am here, Holy Ghost, I am here, I am here for you, Father, I am here, Father, we are here, Father, we are here. We are, we are here for, for you. you. Let's thank God, Lord. We are here for you, Jesus. We are here. Holy Spirit, we are here. Teach us tonight. Let's begin to pray. Mighty God, eternal God, we are here for you. Father, teach us this night. We want to see you, oh God. We want to see you glorified. We want to see you lifted high. Holy Ghost, touch us tonight. Holy Ghost, teach us tonight. We want to experience you. Let us see you through your word. In Jesus' mighty name, we we'll pray. Amen. Let's go and pray and tell God, continue that, Lord, lead me in the path of your word. Mm. Don't let me be deceived. Don't let me deviate. Begin to pray and tell God. Father, Lord, Jehovah, I am here tonight. Lead me in the part of your word. I don't, want to, of word. I don't, I don't want, want to fall by the wayside. I don't want to be distracted. I don't want to be deceived. Holy Ghost, Jesus, I'm here tonight. Teach me, O God. Maurice Sandalia, Paduria, Handelia, Nadia. Let your word become reality to me. Begin to yes. pray. Let your word become, become reality to me. In the I want name your word of Jesus. to become reality. Let your word become I want to reality. see your word. I want to feel Let your word. I want to know your word. I want to abide in your word. I want to hide under your word. Let your word become reality. 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 In Jesus' name we pray. The truth in your word. Lord, reveal it to me tonight. Begin to pray. The truth in your word. 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 The truth in your word
the way every stone he has in me. Give me the heart of flesh tonight. Let the word of God break every stony heart. Let's begin to pray. Father, I pray tonight. Let the word of the living God break every stony heart in the name of Jesus. Let the spirit of the living God touch my heart. Let me receive a hand of flesh. In Jesus' name we pray. Let's say, God, Lord, my heart, my spirit will not reject the word of God. I will receive the word tonight. Let's begin to cry out to God. I pray tonight. I will receive the word tonight. I will receive the word of God tonight. He receiving heart. Let it touch me tonight. Jesus, my name, we pray. Amen. I got to pray and tell God that, Lord, let your word tonight make its crooked path in my way straight. Let the crooked path be straight in my life. Begin to pray and tell God. Father, you have prayed tonight. Have a crooked place. Have a crooked place. In my life. Be made straight. Be made straight. In my children's life. In my husband's life. In my life. In my children's 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 life. In my Heal me tonight. Yes, Let your word heal no, no, me, no, no, body, soul, no, no, and spirit. No, 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 no. Let your word do a work in my life. Let's begin to cry out to God. I pray tonight, my God. Let your word heal me tonight. Let your word heal me. Tonight. Tonight. Heal me. Tonight. I've asked for divine healing. Man, the other rose from bed the boy. Let your word heal my heart, oh God. Hand the other boy, I got a brother. Let your word heal me, oh God. Hand the other boy, I got a little more son than the back. Hand the other boy, shut up. In Jesus' mighty name we we'll pray. Amen. Let's say, God, as I'm here tonight, oh God, let your word deliver me. Mm. He sent for his word and he healed them and delivered them. Father, deliver me tonight through your word. Let's begin to pray. I pray tonight. Mighty God, let your word deliver. 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 Amen. Say, Father, whatever has, been, whatever has been assigned to destroy me, let the word of the living God deliver me completely tonight. Let me get a prayer. I ask for total deliverance tonight. And let the voice of the bone. And let the voice of the bone. How we know the truth. And the truth will set me free. Let the truth and the word of the Lord set me free tonight. Is that everyone free? In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Father, we thank you. Hallelujah. We give all the praise, glory, honor, marvelous King, accept our thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. We are made our prayers unto you. Grant our request, have your way. Amen. Let your name be glorified, honor, and praise. Have your way, O Lord. Amen. Transform our lives, Amen. Lord. My Father, let your word, my Father, work wonders in our lives. Amen. Tonight. By the end of today, Lord, we want to give you all the Amen. praise. And the Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, my Father, intervene. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Amen. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Once again, you are welcome to Interactive Bible Study. We will say to show ourselves our put of God is interactive. That's why you can either comment on Facebook or YouTube because your comments on both platforms and God will bless you. So make sure you comment, make sure you join, make sure you say something, say something, and God will bless, increase, and prosper Amen. you in the name of Jesus. Amen. It's interactive. I know what we're going to do so many very soon, but you know what? Before then, if you have questions, as we said before, you are reading your Bible, or maybe you saw something on social media or on TV or radio you had, or maybe you discussed with some friends. When you read the Bible and you came across some things you want some attention, or something just came up, you know, sometimes something just hits up like that, and you want some you can post it now as we do the summary, and God will bless, increase, and prosper. You are welcome to Interactive Bible Study Online, and you'll be blessed in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, God bless you. You are welcome in the name of the Lord. Yes. Please get your Bibles, and God will bless every one of us. 
It will like never before in, in Jesus' Jesus. name. This evening we'll be taking our reading from Matthew chapter 5 from verses 3 to 12. Matthew 5 from verses 3 to verse 12. So please let's get our Bibles ready and we are reading English Standard Version. So let's get ready. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Why are you laughing, Pastor Chris? Hallelujah. Do we have our Bibles? Please, children, get your Bibles too. I hope the children are on to their parents. Hallelujah. Verse 3 says, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are they that hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Blessed <coughs> are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons of God. Blessed are they that have been persecuted for righteousness sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are ye when men shall reproach you and persecute you and say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad, for great is your reward in heaven. For so persecuted they the prophets which were before you. Mm. Hallelujah. Father, as you're going to your go with us, speak to us. Amen. Let your name be glorified. Amen. Give us understanding. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We've been doing this. We've been talking about the beauty. It's called, what we read, it's called the beauty tools in the Bible. They are beautiful. And not only that, because they are the word of God, Christ, and it has a reward for every point. Everyone you follow and you do, there's always a reward. That's why Christ was saying, they call them the blessed, the blessed. That is, blessed are those who do this for so and so will happen to them. So, this is what we are talking about. As I said before, if you have questions, begin to post in your questions as we do the summary. And God will bless us all in the name of Jesus. Amen. We said verse 1. When the Bible says, blessed, verse 3. Verse 3 of Matthew chapter 5. When the Bible says, blessed are the poor in the street, for there is the kingdom of God. The Bible says that those who are poor in the spirit are those who are hunger for God, who are thirsty for God, who are saying, God, I want more of you. Those who are not saying, I have arrived. Those who are saying, Lord, just teach me your word daily. Those who want the Bible says, this is the kingdom of God. That is, they shall be blessed. And I pray the grace and the anointing to run after God, the grace to be humble enough. Because we say that the proud cannot inherit the kingdom of God. Yes. The proud will be too full of themselves and they can't receive from God again. That will not be our portion, but we will be humble before the Lord. We will humble ourselves under the mighty hand of God. And if we exalt us so that we can be everything that God has called us to be. The Bible says whoever stop learning is in the congregation of the dead. May we not be in the congregation of the dead. May we continue to learn at the feet of Amen. Jesus. May the Holy Ghost expound his word in our hearts and our lives will not be the same. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Verse 4 says. Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. We just talked about that mourn. That is, those that are mourn, they, are, they feel sorry for their sins. Yes. They feel sorry for what they have done. They are truly, truly, truly repentant, and they come to God with a humble heart, not with a right. That is my right. No, they come with a humble heart, and God sees their heart and forgives them, and they mourn about their sins, they mm. mourn about the errors, they mourn about the, the, the mistakes they've made, and they want correction, and they go and say, Lord, have mercy, and they are truly, truly forgiving, because it's only those who come to God mourning, and say, Lord, I am sorry, I feel sorry, I know I've done wrong, and confess their sins truthfully, mm. not hiding. Not trying to justify, you know, maybe you didn't go to God and justify yourself before God and also humbling yourself before there are two different things. So you go before God, you mourn you. You know, in those about talk about sackcloth. When they hear something, they put um, ashes on their head, they tear their garment and put on sackcloth until the evening. That shows signs of sign of humility. That's mourning. So that's what God wants from you and I. And God will give us that grace in the name of Jesus. Amen. So please, if you have your questions now, post it and God will bless. Everyone.
Amen. And so that is some of what we did. We come back to verse chapter, chapter verse four, the second part, and God will bless us all in just but now it's question time. Maybe have some questions I said before, post in your questions. We do that and God will bless every one of us mightily and marvelously in the name of Jesus. So we have one question here. It says, um from Mr. Michael it says, We have often heard that God doesn't do evil. The devil does, but how do we explain Isaiah 45, verse 7, which says, I form the light and create darkness. I make peace and create evil. The Lord do all things. All these things. Sorry, that the Lord do all these things. So the question is, how do we explain that? Mm -hmm. Hmm. How do we explain that God doesn't do evil? Mm. The devil does, but how can we explain Isaiah? Mm. So we can see that in the beginning, God created the light and the darkness, day and night, mm -hmm. and also and also. But you see, nothing happens. God does. God, said, God is not tempted with evil. But there's no one. But God allows things to happen. Yeah. The devil cannot do lift a finger. The devil cannot lift a finger except it goes to God for permission yeah, because permission. he's still under God mm. and we have examples in the Bible Job is a good example before he could attack Job with that evil because Job, evil happened to Job before yeah. he attacked Job with that evil he had God's he had God's permission and God told him that okay I give everything to you but I don't give him your his life so the devil did everything to him but he was unable to kill Job and then when you look again uh, in the story of King Ahab, King Ahab, the, the, God was meeting again with his sons. Usually, you know, God mm -hmm. had meeting in heaven, mm -hmm. with the sons in heaven, and God said, "Who will now go and 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 deceive Ahab?" And I said, "This came that and all that were coming were evil spirits, not good spirits. All that were they were very well. All that were coming were evil spirits. They were saying this, they were saying that, and they said another evil spirit came." And said that okay, I will trick him. I will enter with his prophets, and he prophesy, and he will go to war, and he will die. And God said something: Go, and you will succeed. That is, God gave that uh, evil spirit the go ahead. So no evil spirits, no demon, even the devil himself cannot lift a finger except God gives them the permission. That's why you see up to today, the devil cannot just destroy the whole world because he not create the whole world. He needs permission and God will never give him such a permission because the end of the world is in the hands of God, not in the hands of the devil. So that, that's, that's why we say that evil cannot enter a town or a place without God knowing. Why? Because God is the one that will give permission. Sometimes God makes people escape the evil. For example, when the devil was planning to kill baby Jesus, what did God do? He appeared to Joseph in a dream yeah. that take the baby away Religious. and they took the baby away but you know what that evil was still carried out but Jesus had been removed from the midst of them Jesus was not killed so we can see that no evil happens to this world without God knowing God will always give the authority to do it and that's why no demon or power can do anything they want to do yes and then just I'll, 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 yes the right word is permission that is it God will permit you and when people are not obeying God yes sir. the the Lord we how is the word yes we say permit the enemy to afflict the person yes the person and like we keep saying it's in heaven it does what pleases him that's it. yes he doesn't do evil but he can permit evil yes so that's it that's it and only permits it over those who are disobedient to him mm. if the enemy wants to work evil against his children, mm. you know, but God will always make a way out. Just as in Job, a way out. In the end, what happened to Job? He was blessed double, 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 double. So that's what God does. You know, the devil thought he had killed Jesus. They were rejoicing in their in their car, not knowing that he will resurrect and he will be more powerful than when he died. That's why you have that name of Jesus that will cast out demons and all that. If they knew, the Bible said, if they knew, they would not have crucified the Lord and the King of Glory, but they made him. They thought they had win. They had won. And God, you know, because God is the ultimate. He came around and won the battle and gave us the victory. And at the end of the day, no matter what, as children of the Most High God, the Bible says, "All things <coughs> work together for, for good for those that love the Lord and are called according to His purpose." Because there are some things that we are saying, "Oh, this is evil," and God is saying, "This is set up from heaven yes. just to check it out." 
No, at times even just to put us back on track. Not just on track, just to set us up for a breakthrough. Of course. Because there are many things we go through and I think, oh God, why, 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 why is God allowing this? Why is this happening to me? But one day when we look back, we say, oh, Lord, thank you for that mm. problem. Thank you for that issue. But at the end of the day, it's working out for our good. A good example is Paul, Apostle Paul. When God called him, he said, I will show you how much you must suffer for me. But you know what? God never gave his life to the hand of the devil. Mm. So Paul had three shipwrecks. He had um, nine lashes less, mm. five times less one, four lashes less one, mm. five times. You know what? He suffered a lot and all that, but he was never killed. God, when he was called, the Spirit told him that you will learn how much you must suffer for me. So he had been told what happened to him, but God never gave his life to the devil to kill. You understand? So that's why this guy called Paul survived everything, mm. but his life was secured in Christ. And that's what God does for us. Whereby even though the enemy may strike, may do everything, but God will not allow the enemy for us to be tempted beyond what we cannot bear. And our life, the Lord will not give it in the hands of the enemy because our life is hidden in Christ. Therefore, and therefore the devil cannot conquer mm. Christ. And that's why we have victory. Amen. And if you notice the life of Apostle Paul, yes. even though he went through so much, mm. do you know most of his writing was when he was in prison. Yes, sir. Assuming he wasn't in prison, maybe he would be too busy going up and down. You right. You know, going everywhere. But because he was in prison, he was able to pen down everything that yes, God sir. has given him. So at the end of the day, whatever we are going through, at the end of the day, is going to work out for our good. good. But we must make sure we are in line with the word of God so that the devil will not destroy, the devil will not kill us in Jesus' name. Amen. God give us that grace. So I think we understand that one. So that's why we always pray. We, we need to discern if it's an attack of the enemy we need to discern that okay stop this attack or if it's something that god wants us to go through or pass through sometimes like god wants us to go through or pass through some things mm. for example the bible said and god tested abraham mm. and god tested david you know so if it's what god wants us to be tested we ask for trend we have to go through and come out victoriously mm. but when god tests the end result is blessing there's always a reward for those that pass the test of god and go look at abraham when he passed that test Almost, almost sacrificing his son. God bless him again. Mm. God could not use any other name to bless than his name because there's no name higher than his name. He swore by his name again that mm. as per blessing Abraham, I will bless you. Even to your descendant. And look at the Jews all over the world. They are still blessed because of that single act mm. that Abraham did. May God give us that grace in Jesus' name. Mm. So I think that answers the question. Amen, amen, amen. I have a question here which, you know, usually I hear things but sometimes when I hear things, it just hits me. I went to a program last weekend and I had something. I'm not saying it's wrong, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying it's wrong, it's right. It's a saying that is um, um, rampant, at least. it's general in the Christian dome. But when that person said it, it just hits me that, hold on, is this in the Bible or did we just form it as Christians and we are running mm. with it <laughs> and we are following it and we are possible? Because everybody says it. Everybody says what I'm about to say. But let me read this portion of the Bible. Romans chapter 8, verse uh, 26 and 27. Romans 8, 27. this is my own question. Romans 8, 26 and 27. Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities, for we know not what we should pray for as we ought, as we ought. The Spirit itself maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be altered. Verse 27 says, and he that searcheth the spirit hearts knoweth what is in the mind of the spirit because he maketh intercession for the saints uh, according to the will of god and let me go to first corinthians chapter 14 also and read now ask my question i want to read bible passages to understand that verse 14 verse 2 verse 2 say for he that speaketh in an unknown tongue Tongue speaketh speak not unto men, but unto God, for no man understandeth him. How beget in the spirit he speaketh mysteries. Verse 2 says, I just want to verse let me verse 3. But he that prophesieth, prophesieth unto men for education and exhortation and comfort. Now, my question is I have had many people saying this, and I want us to understand this. It's good to be like, of course. People may wonder what, what our question is, but it's a question. Please, I want to understand very, very well. <laughs> Why do we Christians say that when we speak in tongues, the devil is confused, 
the enemy is confused. They don't understand God. There's nowhere. When I thought about it, I went to search the Bible. There's nowhere in the Bible that stipulates and tells us that the devil does not understand speaking in tongues or understands it. There's no way that someone is speaking in tongues, the enemy is put in disarray. There's no way in the Bible that says, when we speak in tongues, you understand that uh, the Bible talks about when we speak in tongues, we are edifying ourselves. So because it's rampant amongst Christians that when we speak in tongues, the enemy devil does not understand. When we speak in tongues, um, there's confusion in the cup of the enemy. When we speak in tongues, the enemy is in trouble. You understand? Because that person says something at that point and it just hits me. Just like the other day, the pastor was speaking about cover with the blood and apply the blood and it just hits me as he said it. So sometimes when I hear things, it hits me like that. Says, Hold on, I pause. Is that in the Bible? Or is it we Christians that are running with it? If it's in the Bible, please show me. Tap it, show me in the Bible where it says specifically that when we speak in tongues, the devil doesn't understand. When we speak in tongues, there's confusion in the camp of the enemy. When we speak in tongues, then you know we are free from the, the harm and the grab of the enemy because we are speaking to God. So that is my question. Because I want us I want to get this straight very, very well as to because as I said, it's a notion that the whole church. It's a Pentecostal church. We are running with it, but where is the Bible evidence to prove that about this speaking in tongues that the devil does not understand? And when we speak in tongues, there's confusion in the camp of the enemy, and so on and so forth. Please, God will bless. That's my question out there. So let's think about it, deliberate about it. Give me Bible verses. That's why I read some Bible verses before I I asked the question for us to answer. So give us Bible study, Bible verses that proves or. That, that that anchors your your point. I won't say argument, but not arguing. That anchors your point towards this. I said it's a common notion amongst Christians, whereby we usually see when we speak in tongues, the enemy is confused. When we speak in tongues, the enemy the devil doesn't understand. When we speak in tongues, but I want Bible passage, not say, not say, say, say. Well, while people are bringing in their comments. I have First Corinthians fourteen two. Mm. First Corinthians says, "For he who speaks in a tongue does not speak to men, but to God. Indeed, no one understands him. He orders mysteries in the spirit." So I will believe that Christians say, "Oh, when you speak in tongues, the, the enemy wouldn't understand. The enemy is confused. The enemy will be running at us out of that will distraction." in the camp of the enemy because we are speaking mysteries that is what we are speaking he wouldn't understand only heavens can actually respond to what we are saying maybe that's but, why people say that but the bible did not say the devil does not understand see that men around you that's why we read the, that's why I read the verse three men around you do not understand what you are saying not the enemy because i put that i put that part would have put that not the enemy, not the devil. I'm not saying, don't get me wrong, I'm not saying the devil understands or doesn't understand, but I just want us to get that point straight that what we are saying as a church, as Christians, is it based on the scripture or is it based on on on, on ideas or what is it based on? I guess it differs from what do you mean by it differs? Um, I mean, it differs means different. What do you mean? It's derived. That's what you are, it's derived. That no man, but when you read it very well, when you read it very well, I don't know if you have other version, when you read it very well, say that for he that speaketh in an own tongue, speaketh not unto men. It's men, 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 not powers, not demons. Unto men, the Bible says, let's be clear, unto men, unto men. But Pastor, if you look at the Amplified, it says, for one who speaks in an unknown tongue does mm -hmm. not speak to people, mm -hmm. but to God. So if it's, if it's only God that we are speaking to, Automatically, the devil too cannot understand because it says, But only God. So, if it is only God, then no man, no enemy, no devil can understand because it says, Only God. So, what did you say? When you read it again, Pastor, for one who speaks in an unknown tongue does not speak to people who are people, human beings, but it says, But to God. So, automatically, I would assume, automatically, you assume, Pastor, no, 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 no Pastor, because it says, But to God. Only. Yeah, I'm not saying it's wrong. Don't get me wrong. I just want clarification on this because there's nowhere in the Bible that the Bible specifically says that all what is in the Bible is people or men, not spirit. Of course, if a spiritual being, just as um, Paul wrote in Second Corinthians ten four, for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal but mighty, and of strongholds. He mentioned spiritual there. Now in, in Ephesians six from verse twelve, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood. But against principalities, I believe that if that is the case, um, 
Paul would have, I'm not saying that is the authority of what I'm saying. I'm just saying in my own little experience and understanding of what the Bible is saying there, that it says that people or men are human beings here. And of course, when you speak in tongues, the person around you is not understand, except there's prophecy and someone interprets. Then it can edify the church. And that's why I read verse 3 also. But when you look at verse 2, it just says, speaking to men or people, not to spirit, uh, speaking to, to God, speaking to uh, men, men and people cannot understand what that person is saying except God, who is speaking to uh, speaking to God. Yes. And I will believe because many times during translation there are some omissions because um, I'm, I guess we have to go and look at the original script during translation. There are many errors. Look at it now. Another question says, it says, mm -hmm. if you speak languages that others don't know, God will understand what you are saying. Mm -hmm. Though no one else will know what you mean. Yes. And I don't believe that will include the devil himself. You will be talking about mysteries that only the spirit understands. That's why I wanted to read whereby Paul was saying that there are many languages in this world, but God understands every language that is being spoken. That's somewhere in that same verse of that thing but many languages in this world i believe you see i'm not giving glory to the devil i'm just being realistic i believe the devil our enemy understands every language i believe that i'm not talking about speaking in tongues now i believe that no matter what language is here on earth because they are spirit beings and they understand languages they understand whatever language here is on earth and that happened to us when we were doing the deliverance there was a time we were doing deliverance and we spoke french to this to this demon, he answered us back. We spoke with well, there's a language we call Eno in, in our, where we come from that is only people understand understood. So they understand all languages, you understand? They understand all languages. But we're talking about um speaking in tongues. Do the devil actually understand the speaking in tongues or not? Because all what we are talking about here is people and men, and people and men are different from spiritual beings. That's what I'm bringing. People and men are different. All what you are cross-referencing in the Bible is that the right people or the right men or people around you don't understand. That's what not in the spiritual, but people around you. I believe that if it is spiritual, then Paul would have referenced it in that um, First Corinthians 14. That's why I want you to bring out your ideas to say where the Bible actually says that devils, demons don't understand. I'm not discouraging you from speaking in speaking in terms of good. It's powerful. Paul says you edify yourself. You make yourself strong. Paul says, I speak in tongues more than everyone. But I rather speak in a land language to pass a message across to you. Except there's someone to interpret and do. As you know, we, said, we have just spoken about uh, gifts of the Holy Spirit. We said that there's um, private and public. Now, private is what you speak to God in your own closet. And public is the one that someone interprets or you interpret yourself. And the church can be edified or comforted or corrected from the error they are going into and that is what so but my question tonight is that and i want people to contribute i know you are looking for it in the bible contribute is there any bible reference to let us know as christians that speaking in tongues confuses the enemy speaking in tongues the devil doesn't understand speaking in tongues puts the enemy in disarray when we speak in tongues the enemy uh, goes because you know the only thing the only language and the only word that can send the enemy packing is the name of jesus and the blood of jesus so and i want to understand all this you understand understand all this so does it actually mean that when i speak in tongues the enemy is confused does it mean that the devil does not hear what i am saying or does he hear what i am saying i know we are communicating between our spirit to god because god are here even when we pray to god the enemy knows and it goes to accuse the, Bible says the devil is the accuser of the brethren are you going to give this person such a thing even though he or she is sinning and the mercy of god comes in to cover and say that yes and i'm waiting for you people out there to answer i'm waiting for you to give your I'm own saying. opinion or opinion in this in this in this in this matter just to know because i said i'm not saying that you say them even we still say it even we say yes or no but it's just for, for us to know and understand this speaking in tongues. Does the enemy actually hear it or not? Do they understand it or not? And can they, can, do they go in disarray and confusion where we speak in tongues or not? I'm still waiting for the Bible. You know, 
we say on this program, Bible reference is very, very important. Let's base all our things mm -hmm. on Bible reference. You know, saying it doesn't mean that it doesn't work, you understand? But Bible reference, and it doesn't mean that the world will stop saying, they will still say it, you understand? And what we believe as Christians, we declare, happens, but I'm just waiting for Bible reference. So, um, Bible reference, somebody says I here. Say because it says mysteries. I believe the devil cannot understand mysteries. And the reason is this. If you notice when we were doing um, gifts of the Spirit speaking in tongues, there are three types of tongues. There is the one that was spoken in Acts chapter 2. The Bible says men from other nations, they came and they had it. So we never hear that? Of course, because it was it was a language that everybody understands. And there's another one which is in that Acts, um, in Romans 8.26, it says that and Rooney, speak, that's why I read it. Yes, mm. that one it is not for the devil because it is mysteries unto the Lord. So there's no way the devil can understand that. So I will believe when you speak in God in tongues, because from that um first Corinthians 14, 2, it says, Men, it says, men, it says, men cannot understand it, but only God. So if once the Bible says only God, even the devil and his agents. They cannot understand it. That's why the Bible says only God. And where I see only God, it doesn't matter what whatever I want to call them, principalities and powers, forces, blah blah blah. At the end of the day, the word of God says only God. So I would say the devil cannot understand. And let's say it this way. Do you know for you when we are doing it and when you do deliverance, apart from using the name of Jesus, at the moment you begin to speak in tongues, something will begin to happen in the spirit realm. So even let's say the, um, like when we are praying. We are doing deliverance, and the person has been very calm. And all of a sudden, you begin to speak in tongues. Something will begin to shift because you are speaking mysteries. Even what you are speaking, you don't even understand. So I believe the devil does not understand speaking in tongues because there are three realms of speaking in tongues. And the only one that men would understand, apart from interpretation, is when people actually will speak other people's language. Okay. Says, yes, there's no scripture that says the devil cannot understand it when you pray in tongues. But I think the perspective should be that when we pray in tongues, we are praying to God, no one else. It's a private two-way conversation with God that nobody else has any any dash dash was listening to in it. So if we do not know what we are saying, why would God allow Satan to understand when we don't? It is called mystery on purpose, sir. Okay, mysteries keep information away from anyone yes. who has no need to do. I'm not, as I said, I'm not saying it's not wrong, but I'm not saying we are speaking in tongues, the devil doesn't, that's what I said in the beginning, that I am not saying that it is wrong. I'm just looking for a Bible passage to, 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 to confirm that. Now, when Job used to pray and talk to God, they were not speaking in tongues then, do you know that it was even God that called the attention, but the devil had known already. The devil had known about Job, about all that, uh, and and whatever God wanted to plan, God revealed it to the devil. He knew, and he was able to attack Job, attack everything, until God intervened, and after the devil had finished his course, God now restored Job. So, what am I saying? That we say it's only God, yes. But as I said, it's only God that understands, only God that knows, and only God that, that, that interprets our spirit, our spirit is speaking to the spirit of God, and only God understands. We thank God for that. But I'm just saying that is that a very passage? That's why we are to, using First Corinthians. That's why 14, 14 2. 2. Of course, of course, 14 2. But there is no Bible reference and there's no example in the book of Acts up up until Revelation that tells us that the devil is. I'm not saying this, so don't get me wrong. That the devil, um, the devil, the devil. Um, scatters or doesn't understand when we speak in tongues. That's just what I'm trying to bring at that. I think it's a, as someone, as someone, it's a perspective of the church in that area. No, that, okay, we believe it's, that. It's okay, pastor. it's more than perspective. It's more than perspective because the Bible says in that First Corinthians 14:2 that we speak mysteries and mysteries are eating truths. And if the Bible says it is only God. God. Not only God excludes the devil, excludes the devil, the enemy, and his agents. So I would say. So I would say that um, when people say, "Oh, when we speak in tongues, the devil is in disarray, the devil is confused." Yes, because according to First Corinthians fourteen two, it says only God. And when we say only God, that means absolutely.
absolutely God. That means God alone knows what we are doing. That's why the Bible says in that Romans 8 26, it says when we pray, the spirit groans with groanings that cannot be uttered. That even the devil and his agent, they can't do anything with that groaning. Yes, because according to that First Corinthians 14, 2. Because what is mystery? Mystery is anything that is a secret, anything that is a that, that is hidden. So mm. that means it is only God who knows the deep things of God. Okay, I'm not disputing, you understand. So, and as somebody says, if a person prophesies in tongues and the ability to interpret is from God, then I believe that 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 then that if a person speaks in tongues, in tongues, God's language, the devil cannot understand. But once you interpret, you know, sometimes when we speak in tongues, it's someone else's language here on earth. But, you know, the, the, there's a difference between, as we, you know, when we're doing three in tongues, there's a difference between translation and interpreting. When it comes to tongues, it's interpreting. But some may translate that same language to understand what they are saying because it's their language, you understand? But God works in mysterious ways, and that's up to God to decide. God can speak a language whereby somebody there understands and also works as a double edged sword that someone would trans that will interpret and the church will be blessed at the same time so god can do that but in the acts 2 they spoke a language that were that was a language here on earth and i believe that that one the enemy would understand because the people had people had people had so i believe that that one will not apply to or uh, um first corinthians chapter 14 verse 2 will not apply to the one that happened in acts chapter 2 why and also acts chapter 10 because the bible says that when they spoke in tongues the disciples that came with peter had them praising god in tongues so they had the language they were under they were speaking but when it comes to private speaking in tongues privately one to one that's when we speak mysteries to god in our private thing. because when it comes to interpretation of course it's a language anybody can hear but when it comes to one to one, I think that's where we get it wrong. When it comes to, and that's what I be. Paul was talking about one to one. Paul was talking about the private one in First Corinthians chapter fourteen, verse two. When it comes to the private one, when we grow in spirit, when we pray in spirit, is that private one that we groan and words that we cannot alter. The Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit can alter, and it's our own private one that we alter and pray to God. Yes, the devil has no power over that. The devil may not understand that. But when it comes to the language one and interpreting one. I believe the devil may understand because it's a language of, 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 of a country or a tribe or a person of people here on earth, just as the one in Acts chapter 2, verse 1. And that's where we need to get it right that, okay, it's a private one where we talk to one to one to God because Paul was talking about this one to one to God. You and God, he said that the spirit in you is communicating with the spirit in God and your spirits are communicating and that is why it's private. I be that one. The devil has no power over it, you understand? But the one that is interpretation, speaking in tongues and all that, I believe the enemy may understand because it's a language here on earth. And that's what I believe. So may God help us in Jesus' name. And I would say even when we come together and we speak in tongues, because it is not every time when we come together, somebody will interpret tongues. Of course. Most of the time we are speaking mysteries. For instance, when you say, okay, like, I've seen meetings where maybe the one who is to preach or who is to minister feels a strange heaviness somewhere and he will begin to say now let everybody begin to speak in tongues and by the time they speak in tongues the place will be charged up because they are saying devil get out of this place we are not invited what are you doing here mm. and i believe at that point now when we do that we are speaking mysteries unto the lord so i'm still packing by first corinthians 14 2 because even in public too, we speak mysteries. It's not every time when we are speaking in tongues, somebody is saying, okay, yeah, I can interpret. Or even the speaker is interpreting. Many times, trying when we come collectively, like a moment where I will say, oh, and they preach in other ministries, so they will say, oh, mm. we are praying in understanding. Pray Let's in pray in the spirit. When we are praying in the spirit, we are sending the devil out. Say, devil, get out of this place, get out. Because we are speaking hidden truth we are speaking mysteries because that one even though it's a public place there's no interpretation for it so let me ask this question <clears throat> when a demon is doing all the display and we speak in tongues can i speak in tongues cast at that demon Pastor. no i'm asking yes the question. 
Even though yes, speaking in tongues. Yes, yes, demons. yes. We use the name of Jesus. We use the blood. No, my question is that can speaking in tongues cast out that demon? It's a very simple question. Can speaking in tongues? I know we speak in tongues. Uh, don't get me. I'm not against. I'm just. I want an enlightenment, and I want a basis based on the word of God. Now, can speaking in tongues cast out demons? That is my question. Can speaking in tongues cast? There's a demon, and the next we are doing, we are speaking in tongues. The demon doesn't understand. Will demon be cast out? That is the question. Will demon be cast out? Will demon cast no cast out because it's still there. We don't cast out by you speaking in tongues. Because the demon doesn't understand what you are saying. It's only you and God talking mysteries. So with that mystery, the demon doesn't understand. Will he be casted out of that person or will the assignment be terminated at that point in time? Because I believe that in Christendom everything has its place. Everything there's order and there is there is there is there is everything has order and everything has its place. You just like Casting out a demon with the blood of Jesus. You cannot cast out a demon with the blood of Jesus. There's oh, only one not. way. You can you can you cannot say no, just, I, 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 no you must use the name of Jesus. Pastor, you I can, agree there on that. But the thing is, is God cannot be stereotyped. Let me give you an example. For instance, you see, God cannot be stereotyped. I'm not saying God stereotyped. Of course, we know that yes, hmm. the Bible said the name of just every name was bow. Yes, when we are casting out demons, in yes, my name, name, you will cast yes, out demons. Yes, yes, use because of demons. But do you know when you are doing deliverance, even combined with other things, yes, you use the name of Jesus, but you can when you speak in tongues, it's very effective too. Because it has happened to me many times. When I'm doing deliverance by the grace of God, of course, I'm using the name of Jesus. And then when you go to another realm of speaking in tongues, something shifts in the atmosphere. It's like when you say, oh, okay, let's see this way. I know, yes, you're talking about deliverance. When it comes to speaking in, and like when you say, oh, I want somebody, and I want to propose somebody to be baptized in the Holy Ghost. You know? I'm not getting my question. I, speaking I, in tongues cast out demons is the question. You speak it in tongues, can it cast a demon? It is part of the package. It is part of it is it is part of the package. Can you say speaking in tongues? We are speaking mysteries. We are speaking unto God. The no demons don't understand. So how would you understand? But we are not. We are but we are not speaking to. to we are we. Funny enough, we are and um, and we are we are God's rep, and God can decide to use anybody in any way. For instance, if somebody will go, of course, along the line as you are praying, you are saying in the name of Jesus, I command you, get out. But, 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 but funny enough, while you are doing deliverance, many times what do we do? We speak in tongues. Pastor, I'm not against, I'm not against speaking in tongues when delivering. You're not getting my question. I am not against speaking in tongues. I speak in tongues, I believe in speaking in tongues 100%. You understand? But I'm just trying to put things in place according to the word of God. Now, when Paul cast out the demon that was following me in Acts 16, Say in the name of Jesus, get out. He didn't speak in tongues. It's declared in the name of Jesus. All through the apostles, when we went to cast out demons, the Bible said they cast out demons in the name of Jesus. And Jesus gave us in Mark chapter 16, cast out demons in my name. So it's the name of Jesus. And Paul wrote in Acts to um, Philippians 2, 9 downward that therefore God has given a name which is above every name. I am not saying those speak in tongues when delivered. Don't get me wrong, Pastor. I'm not saying don't speak in tongues when you are doing deliverance. I'm not saying speaking in tongues have its part in doing deliverance. You can speak in tongues, of course. Demons cannot understand. But now when you want to cast out the demon, I believe that is the name of Jesus you will use to cast out that demon. That I say that speaking in tongues cannot cast out demons. It's, it is the name of Jesus that will cast out demons. And when you command in that name, get out. The demon gets out by fire. Why? Because it cannot withstand that name. When you speak in tongues, we see that demons are silent like that. They are still there. You understand? But when you now mention the name of Jesus or the blood of Jesus, they begin to react. Why? Because those are the things that they cannot withstand. The name of Jesus and the blood of Jesus, they cannot withstand. Why? Because they will cast out in the name of Jesus and the blood, they will come the, um, the name by the blood of the lamp and by the word of the So the blood of Jesus victorious over them. That is why I said among other things. That is, even though, yes, we are using the name of Jesus, but most of the time when we are, maybe you are praying for somebody, you are casting out demons, you are praying, you are, um, um, you are, you are declining, for, I mean, you are declaring for your life to be healed, 
Most of the time, we don't just use that name in isolation. There are other ingredients that God has given unto us yes. that we can use. I'm not, I'm not saying that. that. Yes, of course, we have, we, have, we have been given that name that is above every other name and the name of just every name of God. But there are other ingredients that are given to us. The name, the blood of Jesus, um, the, the, the word of God. We say, I declare and I declare. The word of God declares. We use the word. We use the, um, we use the blood. We speak in tongues. Even at times, praise will even come in. So what, what I'm saying is this. I'm not saying that Jesus did not say. Yes, we know that the name of Jesus, every name must bow. But there are other ingredients that are connected to that name. Pastor, I'm not disputing. <laughs> You're not okay. getting my question. I'm not disputing that. Praise, speaking in tongues, the word, the blood, everything. Works. That's why I said that you cannot cast out demons by the blood of Jesus. You can only cast out demons by the name of Jesus. That blood is very powerful. But can I say, in the blood of Jesus, get out. It will not work. Why? Use because the name. You use the name. That's what I want to bring up. You use the name, not the blood. The blood is as important. Speaking in tongues is as important. But you cannot now speak in tongues and expect the demon to be cast out. You must say the whatever language you are saying, whether in your mother tongue or in English. You demon, I command you, demon, just get out. And the demon will get out. And I say that speaking in tongues on its own, can I cast them because of demons, demons don't hear what you are saying. They don't understand. You're speaking mystery. So they are still there. The only way you can cast out a demon is through the name of Jesus. Even if you sing and sing and sing and sing and you sing and you don't mention the name of Jesus, the demon will still be there. Pastor, we are not disputing the fact that, that, that the name of Jesus, of course, when even, any, even, even to pray, even when we are praying, it says pray in the name of Jesus. When we are praying, whatever we are doing in the kingdom, the name of Jesus is ultimate and is the ultimate. But there are what I'm saying is there are other ingredients that God has given unto us that we can use. Someone says something there. Yeah. Just like in the military and in war, speaking in tongues is a code of communication with Abba, and the enemy cannot decode as strangers in Jesus' name. When we speak in tongues during deliverance, the words are interpreted by the Holy Spirit as an instruction to each. Or the spirit of God acts against it. But that does not catch it out. You're talking about casting out demons when it comes to deliverance. And I want us to get very straight that it is only the name of Jesus you can use to cast out demons. Even you cannot use the blood of Jesus to cast out demons. You can only use the name of Jesus to cast out demons. You can use the blood to 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 weaken it. You can use the blood to make it make, uh, scatter it and do all that and to be confused. Even you can use the fire of the Holy Ghost, but you cannot use the fire of the Holy Ghost to cast out demons. The fire will just burn it. And if it's just burnt and it's left there, that demon says the only, and that's what the Bible says, the only way you can cast out a demon is in the name of Jesus. You can speak in tongues, you can sing in songs, you can use the blood, you can do everything you want to do, you can even pray, you can quote the word. But if that person does not say, get out in the name of Jesus, that demon will still remain, despite all what we have done. Oh, and that's what I'm saying that casting and don't get me wrong, it's casting out the, I'm not talking about the presence of demon, but casting out the demon finally can only be done by the name of Jesus. Pastor, there's nothing we do in the kingdom without using that name. Because we've been given a name that is above every other name at the that's mention of the name Pastor. of just every name must bow. Whether we are praying you, we are singing you, everything we do, Bible says, everything you do, you do in the name of the Lord. So if anybody is doing deliverance and they omit the name of Jesus, then they are wasting their time. Yeah, but I want to bring out that so that people will understand it's only through the name of Jesus that powers can bow and be cast out. You understand? And speak, you know, speaking in tongues has its place. Let me tell you, speaking in tongues has its place. The blood has its place. The demon just has its place. We just need to understand as Christians when the when the right time to use all the weapons that God has given to us. You just like somebody, the enemy has a gun and somebody has a sword, and you want to fight the enemy with a sword in your hand. Who has a gun? You know that is very risky because the person, the enemy can shoot from afar and meet that person. So what do you do? You have something, either an automatic gun or whatever, to fight the enemy from afar and you can shoot the enemy where they are. If somebody goes with a sword to fight the enemy who has a gun, it's likely that they will be killed in that battle. So we need to know the right weapons, the weapons of our warfare. So we have weapons that God has given to us, the Lord has given to us. We need to use the right weapons for the right occasion so that we can get an effective result using the right weapon to fight the battle that you and I are faced up against. And may God help us in Jesus' name. So that's why I'm saying that, you know, we need to understand 
that's speaking in tongues and also um, the name of Jesus each one the blood of Jesus the fire of the Holy Ghost they have their rules and their place and may God open our understanding to work it out but when it comes to casting out demons man read Acts it's only the name of Jesus that they used to cast out demons Jesus said it in Mark let me bring that Mark chapter 16 I know we all know it but we can see there we can see what the Bible is saying there about say in my name they will cast out demons in my name they will cast out demons. So the only way to cast out demons is in the name of Pastor, Jesus. Pastor, nobody is disputing that fact. I'm not saying. I'm not saying. Is the funny enough whether it is it is a, it is it is the truth that it is only the name of Jesus. Nobody is disputing that fact. So it's well. So I think we understand what I'm trying to say, and God will help us in Jesus. Why am I saying this so that we understand? The place of tongues, the place of Jesus. you know, we just put that we were speaking about tongues before. Maybe the enemy understands it or not. But thank God we know that when we speak one to one to God, nobody understands we're speaking mystery to God. And God is going to give us that grace in the name of God. And when we come together as a church, and the leader says we should pray together, we are praying together in tongues. Of course, it's mysteries to the throne of God, and God will work His wonders. The Holy Ghost will give us utterance as to the way we can speak it and uphold us and guide us in the name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. So I think that answer so we can move on into what we have today. It's just a thought, as I said, just a thought that somebody spoke it and we need to understand and I believe that the Lord will help us in the name of Jesus. Amen. Mm -hmm. So what we have today, the book of, um, the second one, the book of Matthew chapter 5 verse 4. Blessed are they that mourn. We dealt with those that mourn. They shall be comforted. So we're dealing with the other side. And we said that I'm a mourning that they are forgiven, refreshed by God's grace, and those who mourn over their sins and repent, for they shall be comforted when the burden is lifted. So, when the Bible talks about this comfort, how do you understand this word comfort? Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. How do we understand this word? The Bible says that we shall be comforted. In what way shall we be comforted? Do we need to cry and weep before we are comforted? Or how do you understand this word being comforted? While the um, comments are rolling in, yes. If we read, if we read the Amplified Bible, it says, "Blessed, forgiven, refreshed by God's grace, mm. are those who mourn over their sins and repent, for they will be comforted when the burden of sin is lifted. Mm. That is, when the burden of sin is lifted from our lives, when we are sorry for our sins, and the burden of sin is lifted from our lives, then we will be comforted. That is, we have this inner peace." Look at anybody who has been living in sin. The moment they stop living in sin and they have confessed their sins and they are forgiven, what will happen? They will have this inner peace. I would say that is how the comfort will come. According to Amplified Bible, it says when the burden of sin is lifted, I believe there is automatic um, comfort. comfort. So what is the burden of sin then? The yoke of sin. Did, 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 did. Anything that is, that I would say, the burden of sin is is the is the that is what we labor under. Look at anybody who is living in sin; they are laboring under a yoke. But the moment the burden is lifted, they will be free. Is there a no, sorry? Is there a difference between body and yoke? Because it looks like you are mixing both together. Is there a difference between body and yoke? What's burden of sin? What's yoke of sin? And so what's the yoke of sin? What's the burden of sin? We are talking about being comforted. So what is the burden of sin? What is the yoke of sin? Because I believe there are two different things that works different things in people's life. What is the yoke of sin? What is the burden of sin? How do you understand? Because we are talking about being comforted. And we are comforted out of the yoke of sin and the burden of sin. So what is the yoke of sin? What is the burden of sin? What is the yoke of sin? And I go, what is the yoke of sin? I would say what we look at the word yoke. In the Bible, when they say yoke, they said when farmers, when they want to plow their land, they will bring um, cows together and then they will put um, a yoke on them. That's how we know yoke. They put a yoke on the... On the Ox, oxen. Yes, 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 on the oxen. To plow. Yes, to plow. And if the yoke is removed, the what is on the neck. So also is the burden of sin. Sin in our lives is like a yoke. It yokes us. It, it, it doesn't allow us to be what God has. Okay, look at those um, animals. When they are yoked together, they can't go separately. They have to, I mean, they have to follow the same path. That is because they are plowing. So also, when somebody is yoked to sin, 
they are not free from sin they are under that yoke and when the yoke is removed what will happen there will be freedom mm, okay yoke yoke is as well as said someone is yoke i believe that also yoke is yoke of sin is sin overpowering that individual yeah they are under the power of sin they are being controlled by sin they are yoked onto sin and when somebody is yoked onto sin there is no freedom except christ brings freedom yes. they are controlled their thoughts are sinful their ways are sinful they are this are sinful why because they are under the yoke of sin that's why christ spoke about um come and learn from me because in uh, matthew chapter 11 28 downwards it says that um come unto me all you that labor and are heavy and i will give you rest come and take my yoke um, my yoke is easy and my body is light so yoke is something that's very difficult and it's, it, it 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 overpowers people so when someone is under the yoke of sin they are being empowered and controlled by sin and that's what paul was trying to say in i think romans where he says that who will save me from this red body what i don't want to do is what i want to do the good i want to do i cannot do that because such a person is under the yoke of sin they are controlled by sin when you say point of sin when of sin is the weight of you know if you are a true christian and you sin there will be like a vacuum or or, or a, a load a weight on you that weight doesn't remove until you confess your sins that is the body that is the weight of the sin on you is the body but the yoke that is holding that person to commit the sin is the yoke because they are being yoked but christ has come to Jesus from both both the yoke of sin and the burden of sin so and that's why when somebody is released from the burden of sin but it was that is they confess their sins then they will be comforted they will feel relieved they will feel joy and that's why david said in psalm 51 restore to me the joy of thy salvation because when he had committed that sin and he had been told by the by the prophet a burden a, a burden hit him that he lost his joy in the lord sin the body of sin makes people to lose the joy of the Lord. The joy of the Lord is our strength. So David lost the joy of the Lord. And while he was praying, confessing sin, that Lord, restore to me the joy of your salvation. So yoke is what takes people away and yokes them. Why burden is what is the weight of the sin itself on someone's life. And that weight, it looks like, I am trying to see which word I can use to explain it. When there's a body, you know, when there's a body, on somebody's life you know they cannot think straight they are sad sometimes they cannot sleep they cannot think straight why because the body heaviness, is there heaviness, heaviness. that's heaviness the heaviness and the body is there so christ is talking here that um those who mourn that is they want that body removed the body is removed and once the body is removed they are comforted because the body of sin brings heaviness brings the person will be downcast the person cannot think straight. even sometimes if it's not dead with it can bring sickness but once the body is dealt with, what happens? That person's life will be comforted. May you be comforted in the name of Jesus. Mm. That's why I love the word and the fact Bible says it says, Blessed, forgiven, refreshed mm. by God's grace are those who mourn over their sins and yes. repent, for they will be comforted when the body is, of sin is lifted. lifted. That is it, it's lifted. I love the way Mr. Max says, burden is the sense of guilt, the sense of guilt, the heaviness, and yoke is bound to sin, which is, which, that's what it is, bound to sin, that they are yoked, and sin is controlling them, why the burden of sin? Now, the difference between a Christian, a Christian may not be yoked to sin, let me finish, a Christian who is born again may not be yoked to sin, may fall into sin, when that Christian falls into sin, what happens? There's a burden, the guilt of the sin is there. And not until that guilt or that sin is confessed, that guilt will still continue in that life, which is a burden. But they are not under a yoke. You need to get that. A Christian who is born again, who is really born again, is not under the yoke of sin. Once Christ has delivered him or her and they are set free, they are not under the yoke of sin. But sometimes people fall into sin. Once you fall into sin and you don't confess your sin, sins, it becomes a burden. It becomes a sense of guilt. And if you don't confess it, it begins to press that person down. And weigh that person down and the person will be weak in reading the word of god be weak in prayers why because they have not done the right thing but when they confess their sins as the bible says when they mourn over their sins the burden is lifted and they are comforted let me repeat that a christian who is really born again is not as paul says 
we are not slaves to sin anymore. Once we yield ourselves to Christ, Christ is our master, is the controlling of soul. The yoke of sin has no power over us. But sometimes the burden of sin is there, whereby a Christian falls into sin. But if you confess your sins, it's free and just to forgive you and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And that's when the comfort comes. Because after you come, you see that there's a great relief. The guilt is lifted up and the guilt is removed. And, and, and that brings me to the next question. Who the enemy uses? We're talking about this comfort. Some people, some Christians, they don't enjoy this comfort that Christ has given us because they are sins, they have confessed, and for, God, God has forgiven. The enemy brings it back, and they feel guilty over that sin that has been forgiven. And because of that, they don't live an enjoyable life. What should a Christian in such a state do? You know, somebody has committed the sin maybe two years ago, you've confessed it and done it, but every now and then the enemy brings it to you as a guilt of sin. Now what do you now do about it? Because many people are drawn back or hampered or, or, or not allowed to move forward. Why? Because of the guilt or the burden of that sin. How do a, how does a Christian deal with such an issue? That's my question. How does a Christian, because many Christians are affected by that. Some things that they happened many years ago, as part of they will come and begin to say, and it's many years ago, God has forgiven. But that guilt is still there. So how do they how can you deal with such a situation? How would so how the um, answers answer are, are coming in because of the delay? Mm. I would say the first thing is as a child of God, we need to know what the word of God says. Yes. If you know what the word of God says then you will not be living in condemnation. The Bible says in First John, it says, if we confess our sins, it's faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. As a believer, if you don't know the word of God, yesterday will be plaguing one. That's why the Bible says in Isaiah 43, 18, remember ye not the, the former things, things, neither consider the things of old. Now it says, behold, I'm doing a new thing. As a believer, like I used to know a woman, she would say, oh, when she was an unbeliever, she committed so much abortion, she did this, and I would say, you are forgiven. forgiven. That is in your past. The Bible says our sins, he remembers no, no more. more. The Bible says, even if our sins are as red as scarlet, scarlet. they will be as white, white as, as snow. snow. If they are like crimson, crimson. they will they'll be, be like, like wool. That's why Hebrews 8, 12 says, Hebrews 12 says, for I will forgive, sorry, Hebrews 8 to have says, For I will forgive their wickedness mm. and will remember their that sins no more. more. So as a believer, if somebody is still living under the under the of under sin. under the burden or of guilt. Uh, still living, I mean still going through um guilt mm. because of what they did 10 years ago you have to free yourself and one of the ways you can free yourself is know what the word of god says mm. of course the devil will say ah, have you forgotten mm. you do this a devil get lost jesus paid the price for me on the cross of, of calvary. calvary the bible says it is finished the bible says our sins he it remembers no more. more let me see what i'm the what I'm the part bible says about that um hebrews 8 12 it says he says, For I will be merciful and gracious towards their wickedness, and I will remember their sins no more. Mm. That's even where Paul says, Our sins are under the depth of the sea. That is, he does, God does not remember our sins. It is man that will remind you. Remember mm. five years ago, and it's true, I've forgiven you, but I'm just reminding <laughs> you mm. so that you, but God is not like that. The Bible says, Our sins. He remembers no more. So peradventure somebody is on this hour and you've been going through um um um, um guilt through through guilt, guilt because, yeah because of what you have done. Do you know that thing can really depress some That's people? Asking, yes. Some people it can mm. cause depression. In they will life. say, Oh, is that some people they will say be crying over what they did over the mistake of three, five, ten years ago? Mm. Get over it. Jesus paid the price for us on the cross of Calvary. The Bible, our sins, he remembers no, no more. more. Like I'll take say, Look, God has forgiven you. Forgive yourself. Because if you don't forgive yourself, mm. then one will just be living a miserable life. It. And it's not the will of God for us to be miserable. Mm. Look, he paid the price for you. For even when somebody will remind you, have you forgotten? Three years ago, mm. you were a thief. Tell them, 
That was in my yesterday. Mm. Just like Catherine Puma in those days, because she minded a divorcee and then she repented. And then the woman said, even when she will go to a place to preach, the moment they know that she's divorced, they will say, No, you cannot preach on her altar. She said initially she was feeling bad, but she said, One day the Holy Ghost told her, Look, that Captain Kuma died a long time ago. So she now said, When people will now come to her and say, Oh, Blah blah blah. She said, Excuse me, I don't know who you are talking about mm. because this is a new me. Mm. That's why don't live a life of guilt. <coughs> Free yourself from your yesterday. Jesus paid the price for you, He paid the price for us. That's why don't live under condemnation. Mm. If any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. All things are passed away, all things are become new. If the devil will come. There are many things the devil will say, Funke, yeah, back, get lost, devil. Mm. This is new me. This is new Funke. What I have done in my past, it is, it is, it is, it is cancelled out by the blood of Jesus. And I believe that we apply to everyone too. Let me read the effort in the Bible that will put our minds at rest for those who are still feeling guilty. Mm. You know, guilt. The Bible says in First John chapter one, mm. verse nine. Let me just read that. Yes. Chapter two. If we confess our sins, it's faithful and just yes. to forgive us our sins. And to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If you confess, once you confess, then let's go to chapter two. Now two says of first John. Chapter two says that my little children, these things write I unto you, that ye sin not. And if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and He is the propitiation for our sins, and not for us alone, but also for the sins of the whole world. So if anyone sins, there is that. And then Romans chapter 8, I think. Romans chapter 8, if that's what yes, say, they have there, there is therefore no, no condemnation, condemnation for them which are in Christ yes. Jesus, yes. who walk not after their flesh, but after the spirit. So once you go to God and you confess your sins, that's the talking, that's where he says that blessed are those who mourn. You mourn by confessing your sins, you are feeling sorry for your sins. Therefore, you are comforted. Mm -hmm. Your sins, he remembers no more. So, stop the guilty conscience. Somebody tell that no guilty conscience. No guilt. Because many people are dying. Even Christians are dying out of guilty conscience. They see themselves unworthy. They see themselves nothing. They say, as, 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 as useless in the presence of God. No, you are not useless. You are wonderfully and graciously made in the, in the image of God and God wants to use you that sin you committed no matter how grievous it was once you have confessed it he has cleansed you with his blood you are a new person you are a new generation the old has passed away behold the new has come therefore there is no guilt there is no condition there is no guilt stop in entertaining the guilt of the enemy mm. the enemy has come to kill to steal and destroy the enemy is the accuser of the brethren so Stop listening to the enemy. The enemy has failed. It's the one who has lost it. It's the one that there's no dependence for. It's the one that is going to hell and it will, end, it will end up there in hell. He has no choice. But you and I, once we confess our sins, that is the process of mourning. But I do that mourn, they shall be Once you confess your sins and you mourn and you are sorry for your sins, then you will be comforted. And that comfort includes wiping out every guilt. Let me be that. That comfort includes wiping out every guilt. So don't let the enemy tell you, ah, it's because of what you did. That's why you're not married yet. Ah, it's about what you did. That's why you don't have. You know the enemy is very corny. That's why you don't have any children yet. Oh, it's because of what you did. That person you used, you did that. That's why you see you don't have a job yet. You are soft. It's a lie. It's all lie because all those things the enemy is reminding you of. It has been forgiven, wiped out. Even if you go to God, God does not remember it anymore. So don't allow the enemy to pursue you and put guilty conscience on your life. If anyone is in Christ, is a new creature. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. There, therefore, there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. May God help us so that all the guilt mm. is removed from our lives and destinies in the name of Jesus. Amen. So in case anybody has been laboring under mm. and being guilty of that their yesterday, mm. you know what? Get these scriptures. Yes. Romans 8, 1. Write it down. Yes, sir. And, uh, 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 um, meditate on it. Yes, sir. So that when the devil is trying to remind you of your yesterday, mm. give him the word of the Lord. Yes, sir. Romans 8, 1. Yes, sir. Um, 1 Corinthians. 
1 Corinthians 5, 7, 5, 17. 5, 17. If any man be in Christ, is a new creature. All things are passed away. All things have become new. 1 John 1, 9. If we confess our sins, mm. it's faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse That's us so from all unrighteousness. And then you can write down John 3, 17. Mm. You'll be surprised. Many people, their sins still affecting them. When the thought is coming, instead of wasting your time meditating on yesterday, mm. sit down, look at those scriptures. You, even is. if you have to write it, on your fridge, mm. write it in the bathroom, write it on your, in, bed. on your bed, so that at the end of the day, you'll be made to meditate on these things. Look at uh, John 3 17. John 3 17 says, For God did not send the Son into the world to condemn, to condemn the mm -hmm. world, but that the world through him might be saved. saved. Always give the devil the word of God. Another one in 2 Corinthians 5 21. 2 Corinthians 5 21 says, 2 Corinthians. 521 for he made him who knew no sin. sin to be sin for us that we might become the righteousness of God oh. in him if the devil will come to say hey you sinner say devil get lost I am not a sinner I am the righteousness of God, God. through Christ Jesus that second Corinthians 521 if somebody can actually put on these verses please that is, um, Romans me, is Romans 8 1 yes First Corinthians chapter five seventeen, yes, and then John three seventeen, yes, and First John chapter one verse nine, and First John chapter two verses one and two. Write it down. And then and James, J okay. sorry, John three seventeen. I've said it. John seventeen. I've said it. Okay. John chapter. John and also 17. Isaiah chapter one verse eighteen. Yeah. Isaiah 1 18, it says that come, let us be together, together says the, the Lord. Lord. So, Though your the sins are as like scarlet, they, they shall be as white wool. as snow. Mm. They are red as crimson, they shall be like as wool. wool. That's so, Isaiah 1 18. So, you see, these are the words of God that gives us assurance. And also, Romans 5 8 says that while we are yet sinners, Christ died, died for, for us. us. So all this word, please, can somebody write it down for us, please? Romans 8, 5. All these words are telling us that definitely there's no guilt anywhere. As mm -hmm. long as you have confessed your sins and you're not going back to it and you are sorry for your sins, therefore, there's no condemnation in you. Why? Because it will, you know, the reward of mourning is to be comforted. Yeah. You know, we said last week that all these beatitudes has a reward. So the reward of, of the reward of, of, of being mourning is to be comforted. So God will bless us all in Jesus' name. Thank you, Minister Mike. You need to Thank add you. 1 John chapter 1, verse 19, uh, 1 John chapter 2, 1, uh, verse 1 and 2. Add that to it. And I believe that that will make it complete in the name of Jesus. Amen, amen, amen. And then also, I think that's the only two. 1 John and then John, John 3, 9. And John, I say, yeah, that's it. So, May God help and then 2 Corinthians 5.21 Yeah, 5.21 He says, in, he, he, For he made him who knew no sin to be sin for us, yes, so. that we might become the righteousness of God in him. Amen. Do you say, Mute, are you there? Uh, mama, <laughs> Where are you? Imagine. I'm waiting for your write-up. Amen. So, as I said, let's write this down so that when people come again, they can go over it and then get those words. Because, you know, Guilty conscience is what kills it of Christians. Oh, yes. Even though there's no guilt anywhere. Mm. The guilt has been cancelled. The bond has been... Thank you very much, Minister Mike. 1 John 1, 19, 2 Corinthians 5, 21. Also 2 Corinthians 5, 17. And also 1 John 2, 1. So 1 John 2, verses 1 and 2. They add that onto it so that people can see and know. Why? Because these are the things that will help people out there to know that there's no guilt anywhere. No, listen, you know, as long as you have confessed, if you don't confess it, there's guilt. And the enemy has every right to bring it and hammer it. But once you have confessed it, and you have forsaken it, and you feel sorry for your sin, then you'll be comforted. Therefore, there is no condemnation any, any, anywhere. The Lord has done it, and the Lord has given you an I victory. Thank you, Mr. Mike, for reading 2 Corinthians 5.17. And first John 2 1. Thank you very much. So it is well to be God uphold us and give us the grace. For everyone that moans, there's always a comfort. Yes. And the comfort is that you will experience peace that surpasses. Because when the burden is lifted, 
Do you know what happens? You explain that peace, you'll be happy, you'll be joyful, you'll be free, you can think straight, you can sleep easily, you can rejoice, you can pray, you can read the word of God, you can do spiritual things, you can even go to joy, church joyfully and happily. When they are singing, you don't put your arms out, you sing with them, you are dancing, you are praising God because there's no guilt anywhere. Mm-hmm. You are experiencing the peace that surpasses every understanding and God himself will give us that grace in the Amen. name of Jesus. It is well with your soul. So I think we end there by the grace of God and God will uphold us by fire and by grace in Jesus. Anyone, anyone that, uh, I said anyone that, anyone that, anyone that uh, mourns for their sin, the reward is to be comforted and Amen. they will experience a joy that surpasses every understanding and i want everybody to type the only one person type it no more guilt yes. no guilt no guilt no guilt no more guilt right there no more guilt no more guilt i want us to write that down we know that in our hearts no more guilt no more guilt no more guilt we are free and we are free indeed stop allowing the enemies to bring back your past your past is done and dusted. Christ has paid the price for the past. It's gone. Start afresh. Start afresh. No guilt. No more guilt. And then let somebody else start. Start afresh. Start afresh. We must start afresh. And God Himself give us that grace in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 So let's be just about two prayer points. And I know that we shall be blessed in the middle. The first mm-hmm. prayer point is that, oh Lord. Any guilt the enemy is bringing back, Lord, remove by fire. Give me the grace to overcome that guilt and use your word against the enemy and overcome the enemy. Let's begin to pay them the comfort in your world. You said that if I moan, Lord, you will comfort me. Lord, begin to com- let me explain the comfort in you and in your world. Begin to pay them on just. Father, 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 experience the comfort in you, in your word and in you. You said if I, if I, I make that moan, my Father, 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 Mm. Let's begin to declare it in I'm Jesus' fair, name. Fair, I declare and I declare I'm free, 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 free from my yesterday. The anointing and the power to free from my yesterday. From every condemnation I received today. In Jesus' name we pray. Someone say absolute freedom. I decree and I declare absolute freedom from my yesterday. Let's begin to declare and declare. I declare and declare absolute freedom from my yesterday. I'm going to see in the power of I am free. In Jesus' name. Jesus, they will pray. Amen. Let us silence every accusing voice. Mm. Any voice accusing anyone, we silence it tonight. Let's begin to pray. Father, I pray, I decree and I declare. I silence every accuser, every accuser of the enemy. Be silenced tonight in the name of Jesus. We silence the voice of the enemy. We silence the voice of the wicked. The enemy be silenced forever. Silence them tonight. In Jesus' name, we pray. And let's the Lord grace not to go back to our to our to, to our sins as a dog goes back to his vomit give us that grace oh god let's begin no, to pray no, 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 father i will not return to my old vomit no, 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 i will not go back to my sin if any man be in christ he's a new creature all things have passed away all things have become new the grace to stand firm in you and to live a life of purity i receive oh god we receive tonight we bless your name oh god in jesus mighty name we pray father we thank you bless glorify you we have heard your word that lord those who shall be comforted. Mm-hmm. Lord, we have been sorry for our sins. We confess our sins, Lord. So, we have more, Lord, we declare we are comforted in Jesus' Amen. name. And any guilt that the enemy is bringing, we cancel, we cancel with the blood of Jesus. Amen. We declare and decree we are new. We are starting mm-hmm. afresh. No more guilt in the majority because we have paid the price for all Hallelujah. our guilt. We have confessed it and we have denied it and we are not going back to it. Therefore, Lord, we are comforted. We shall enjoy the comfort in you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Let your name be glorified. Amen. And manifest the grace not to go back to our vomit, not to go back to our sins. Lord, give it to us in Jesus' name. Amen. Just stand firm and stand in you. Amen. Solid rock in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Amen. We bless and worship you. Amen. In Jesus' precious and wonderful name we pray. Amen. And in case you are out there, the only way you will not be living under guilt yes, 
The only way you will not be burdened to see mm. is when you accept Jesus, Jesus. as Lord and Savior. Yes, the Bible declares, whoever will call upon the name of the Lord shall, shall be saved. saved. So if you're out there, you're not born again, please say this simple prayer after us and mean it mm. from your heart. Yes. Say it after us, say, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus I, come I come before you. I am a sinner. A sinner. Forgive, me my sins. Forgive my sins. Wash me with your blood. With your blood. I accept you, I accept you as my Lord. Lord and, Lord and Savior. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' In name. Jesus name. If you have just said that prayer, congratulations. You know what? You have just been born again. Your name has just been written in the last book of life. Get yourself a church. Get into a living church and get yourself a Bible. And in case you are in London, that's the rest of the ministry on the screen. Come to Body of Christ Center where you can be fed with the Word of God. And God will bless every one of us in Jesus' name. Once again, thanks for joining with us for being part and parcel of this Bible, the Bible study. Thanks for your comments. We do appreciate you. And God will bless and mm -hmm. you. Know, just quickly, we want to give you a lowdown of our programs. And um, Wednesdays like this, we have Bible study. Join us at 7 p.m. and tell your life shall never remain the same again. By the grace of God, on... Just one second. By the grace of God, just one minute. Oh, oh, you've said this one. Yes, yes. Oh, so I was already out of the service. Hallelujah. So, on Hear My Cry every day, 6 a.m. every day, by the grace of God, we are, we are my cry. Join 6 a.m. UK time. And God will bless everyone of us as we join in Jesus' name. And every Wednesday, 1 o'clock in the afternoon, and every Monday, 10 p.m., Hear My Cry. Join and God will continue to hear our cry in Jesus' name. Amen. And then we have prophetic hour. Sorry, we were not able to come yesterday. But we're going to come next week. And you know, for all our viewers on Prophetic Hour, we are going to we are going into our fifth year by the grace of God. My five years has gone just like that. Mm -hmm. Wow, five years. So what we're going to do, double blessing, double blessing before and after. So next week by the grace of God, we started, we started um, Prophetic Hour on Tuesday the 7th of August Hallelujah. 2018. Tuesday the 7th of August mm -hmm. 2018 was when we started um, prophetic hour by the grace of God and then so we will have double celebration first one second of August that will be before the seventh and then ninth of August after this is going to be very prophetic so if you want to hear Amen. what God is saying join us by the grace of God it's going to be celebration galore Hallelujah. God will speak to us this Tuesday coming is the second and the upper Tuesday the ninth by the grace of God join us nine o'clock prophetic hour God will bless you and then every Tuesday every Thursday we have uh, mountain moving prayers join us tomorrow 9 p.m very powerful prayer points and your life shall never remain the same again Amen. please don't forget our monthly programs on the my cry oh god the first seven days of the month the first seven days we ask for the power of the holy ghost yes. 6 a.m in the morning please join and god will bless every one of us in jesus name. and then the third friday of every month we have what we call holy ghost night bj join us at 12 midnight i think your life shall never remain the same again and please don't forget on the arm i cry oh god the last three days of the month we are praying and fasting and by the grace of god the one for this month will be on friday saturday sunday friday 6 a.m one o'clock and one o'clock in the afternoon and saturday 6 a.m one o'clock in the afternoon and then on sunday six o'clock in the morning be a part of this praying and fasting and if you know you'll be doing the fasting you keep yourself get ready how do you get ready you make sure you are taking enough food you are eating. eat all the food you can eat <laughs> <laughs> you put it in the plain language eat all the food eat as much as you can <laughs> <laughs> I did not say that. But all I'm saying is prepare yourself. Because why did I say that? If you are going to go into praying and fasting, mm -hmm. and maybe two days before the time, you don't have time to eat. No, don't do that too. <laughs> so, you know you are going to fast. Take plenty of food now. Eat everything now. So that by the time you get into the praying and fasting, God will help us. And please, because I noticed that people are joining for the three days dry fast. Please. If you are doing three days dry fast, I'm begging you, take water. God is not a cruel God. You know the weather is warm. So please, take water. God will see and serve us. And God will help us. But I'm not saying go and take juice. So. Uh -huh. Because you are not doing food fast. Water, aqua, aqua, water, ordinary water. The, the <laughs> that, is, that is if you are doing 
the three days dry fast. Dry fast. Mm. Take water so that we don't get dehydrated. Amen. That's the word. Amen. Mm. And don't forget the last day of every month we have Gilgal experience. So this Gilgal experience will be this Sunday coming by the grace of God. That the the last day at 11.45 for just 30 minutes. Join us. I tell you, your lives, our lives shall never remain the same. And God is going to work his wonders and miracles. We really appreciate you all doing all these our programs. And God will bless you. We are always on. God will honor you and bless you in the name of Jesus. And please don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. That's the address on the screen. And as you subscribe to the um, channel, remember to press the little notification button so that you will never ever again miss any of our live broadcast and god will bless every one of us in jesus name and don't forget on our facebook like it love it follow it and share it and also the page like it and uh, like the page and follow the page and god will bless increase and prosper you mightily like never before in the name of jesus mm -hmm. once again we, we like to appreciate you all for joining with us joining us god will bless increase and prosper you and your life shall never remain the same again let's go before god and ask what i want from god and god will grant our request let's pray the name of jesus In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Father, we thank you. We worship you. Yes. We adore you. The Bible says, as we have spoken in his ears, that is what to we'll do. do. Yes. Lord, we have asked in your name, yes. according to your will, answer us speedily in, in the, the name, name of, of Jesus. Jesus. I declare and I declare whatever represents delay to answers to prayers. This moment it ends in the name of Jesus. Amen. The Lord we arise for our sake, we will hear our petition it will respond to us even like never before in the, the name, name of jesus. jesus the postmaster of heaven will deliver unto us in the name of Amen. jesus and every postmaster of hell like under of Osata, will come against you in the name of jesus Amen. you will never deliver Amen. The only postmaster of heaven Amen. and i shall be testimonies Amen. Jesus, my name we will pray. Amen. Thanks for joining. God will bless you. We do appreciate you. Amen. And God will honor. Don't forget that we have this program every Wednesday at 7 p.m. Join us. And God will bless and kiss and prosper in Jesus' name. Thanks for those who share. Thanks for those who made the points. Thanks for those who type. Thanks for those who, who are part and part of the program. We really appreciate you. God will bless you. God will honor you. And God will prosper in Jesus' name. A plan of God for every life will come to pass in Jesus' name. As we are ending this month, and entering the new month, the month of the eighth month, the month of new beginning, God will do new beginnings in our lives and Amen. destinies in the name of Jesus. We always go high and top and the head and not the bottom in the name of Jesus. Thank you and God bless you. Shall we share the grace and fellowship, please? With the the grace, grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, Christ the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much. God bless you. Have a nice evening. Bye-bye and bye-bye.